Hello, this is Dane Takahashi. I'm the lead writer for GamesBeat Adventure Beat, and I'm happy to be moderating this session on the world of game trailers and game marketing. And I'd like to have our panelists introduce themselves, uh, starting with Angelo uh, Ferrugia. Hi, Dane. Um, my name is Angelo Ferrugia. I'm the EVP um, Director of Global Director of Creative Production here at The Mill. I'm fairly uh, new here at the mill, but I'm really excited to um, be joining the team. Prior to this, I was the uh, head of production um, for Marcom at uh, Electronic Arts. So. Awesome. And uh, let's go to Robert uh, Sethi. Hey guys, uh, my name is Robert Sethi. Um, I'm a director and, and executive creative director at the mill. Uh, I've been here around 14 years and been in the industry for a long time. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Martin Binter. My name is Martin Binter. I'm a director and a creative director at The Mill here in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So uh, I guess, uh, you know, uh, our first question is why are, why are game trailers important? And uh, I guess I can take a crack at, uh, at answering that uh, at the outset. And uh, I feel like uh, game trailers are, you know, part of the process of immersing you in uh, either lore or entertainment or you know you know getting getting you excited about a game and uh, uh, the trailers uh, you know they, they sort of give me inspiration to go and try out a game or um, you know uh, get interested in the story uh, enough to motivate me to just keep on playing something like multiplayer like it's it's like it should give me some kind of purpose. But uh, uh, anyway, um, does anybody else want to take a crack at, you know, just why these things are important as well? Yeah, I mean, it is, as you said, there's many purposes for them, right? Building intrigue, building uh, backstories or expanding on characters of the world. But I think what, what, one of the main things that we want to do when we do these trailers or, or films regarding to the game is, is really show people and the audience what the experience is of playing the game in a short and quick way, right? It's sort of drawing them in through storytelling of a linear film of how the interactive experience of playing the game is, right? And, and sometimes you add story to it, sometimes you want to tell backstory of characters you can play, but that is really the key for me. Yeah, and I'm, if I can add to that, I think we also just want to get the fans really excited. I mean, we want to hype it up so that, you know, eventually we're going to ship products as well. That's mm -hmm. a that's perhaps a, a really important function of them as well. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I, I agree both with both what they've said. Uh, excite and delight and give you a peek inside and really peek intrigue to what is to come and what that experience really is going to be. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, Angelo, do you want to uh, sort of Tell us what kinds of uh, uh, trailers are possible here with games. Um, uh, you know, whether it's at the very beginning of of, uh, of something or or something that's more familiar, I guess. Yeah. yeah so there's there's very different types of trailers uh, in video game marketing. Um, you've got new console, which is more of a branding thing. Um, that's where you see a lot of the live action with the big visual effects, like the launch of you know PS5 or Xbox, you know. Xbox, um, and then you go into a first look. So like for a franchise, you've got your first look, cinematic first look. Um, that is, I think, what we're all talking about when it's really about excite and delight and like tell the story. Um, mm -hmm. Those are the ones that, that usually garner the most views in the very beginning because it's that very first insight that everybody's just so excited about. Mm -hmm. And then as you move down the funnel, then you get into, you know, first look gameplay. And that's really where you get into the tacticality of it. Like, what are the mechanics of the game? What am I getting? What am I buying? What, what am I doing? Mm -hmm. And then from there, you get into, you know, launch where it's like the game is released. So it's a little bit of everything, you know, point of purchase. And then you move into, um, at that point, you get into live services where the games are sustained. And you can still tell, start telling stories here or like, what are the new maps? What are the new modes? What are those things? So you can see it's very um, formulaic, but also it's really complicated because, you know, the the audience wants to know about all that if they're going to go play these fun things. So mm -hmm. that to me is more of um, HD. Mm -hmm. Mobile is a different 
beast in marketing um mobile more is just about like okay cg trailer launch it there and then maybe some updates and stuff like that but it's it's just it's it's just a little bit more um less formulaic so, mm -hmm. yeah yeah and so so here's a, a bit of a meteor topic i guess what how, how do you make a authentic uh game trailer like what's what's involved in figuring out what should be in that trailer um, if you want to really, you know, stay true to um, what uh, you know what the game is and what gamers want. Uh, and, it's, it's, yeah, go I ahead. just need to jump in. I mean, it's a great question, right? And it, it's so dependent on the game and where in the process you are, right? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, obviously, you need to research, research the IP, research the lore, uh, find out what the purpose of the game is, what type of game it is. Ideally, if you can, you want to play it, right? But sometimes we jump in before the game even exists, right? Or when it's super early, so there isn't anything to, to sort of play. But the more conversations you can have with the dev team and understand what they're going for, you know, the, the better you can sort of align with that, right? So mm -hmm. it is, it is. I mean, like anything really, right? It's a lot of research to, to sort of nail that and finding out what, what the key things for the game is. And I think that that's so important you know, as Robert points, is authenticity because a gamer can sniff out if it's not authentic. <laughs> yeah, they're just, they, gamers are a community unto their own and they're very particular in 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 their in their games. <laughs> yeah. You know, so very yeah, active and, community. And, and so not always, right, if you, and again, it really depends, right, but if you, if you work with a famous IP, the game may not be exactly the same, right? So there might there will be differences, and sometimes games pushes the IP, right, or keeps evolving, right? And the characters might change versus how they've been written about in books or films, right? So mm -hmm. you know you follow that trend, and you need to. Sometimes you can sort of set some of that as well, right? You can with, with a game trailer if it's early on, you can sort of help push that narrative and help that push that design, which mm -hmm. is super exciting and really fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean it's also really important for us to listen. I mean. You know, sometimes we work on things where, you know, the developers have been developing this for like the last five or six years and we're coming in, you know, for 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 a moment like later on. So I think it's really important for us to, you know, spend all that time researching, learning everything that we can about the game in order to stay authentic to what that experience is going to be. Mm -hmm. and, and, and also, oh, sorry to jump, uh, interrupt you, Andrew, but, but also then look at the gaming community, right? If there's already a, a loyal fan base, you want to see what they enjoy about the game what are the things and how are they playing the game because it can be very different right so mm -hmm. it is and if that if it's a new game and that doesn't exist then you look at similar games and how those fan bases are playing that game and what they're like right so you sort of want to if, if if it's if you want to do a great game trailer you want to weave some of that into it right together with the narrative together with the history and mm -hmm. you hint about what's to come and how it is to play the game and if you can weave in how the community is interacting with the game. Well, there mm -hmm. we go, right? 100%. That is, that's the secret sauce. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah, and I, I guess uh, it, I, I've seen a lot of um, trailers, uh, uh, you know, sort of specifically mentioned that uh, this is in-game footage or this is uh, in-engine, um, you know, uh, cinematics here. And, uh, you know, that seems very important, I guess. Um, can, can you think of many reasons why you would you would want to go out of the engine, I guess, uh, for like, uh, you know, to, to show a trailer to to gamers to, to get them ex uh, excited? Because, yeah, they, they have been very suspicious about cinematics that are like way too good for what the game really looks like. Right. I'll start, Sethi, mm -hmm. if you want me to. <laughs> yeah, go for it. Jump in there. It, 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 it's a sticky situation because I think that, you know, you want truth in advertising and you don't want to overpromise and underdeliver. So I think that it really comes down to a strategic decision from um, the marketing team or mm -hmm. the developer at that point of what really is the best approach. Um, I know that if when, you know, I was working on Electronic Arts, we wanted to stay as true and as as close to fidelity of in-engine work for the cinematics. Um, versus going to CG. But mm -hmm. for an example, it's what I was talking about with mobile, there, you know, those assets don't hold up. So it does make sense to go to CG 
or you know something like FIFA or um, like a sports thing like FIFA or Madden or something like that, you can take that leap of faith and you can go live action used with gameplay in there. So I think it's really a strategic decision between marketing and studio um, to ensure that they're delivering the promise to mm -hmm. their fans, in my opinion. You yeah, can get I mean, the technical, Seppi. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'll jump in. I, I love this topic. I mean, this, it, it, to be honest, it's not different than, I would say, any other medium, right? If you have a story to tell, the number one thing is understanding your story and then you decide the medium you want to tell it in, right? And understanding why you're picking that medium, right? So for a game, there's some technical aspect, right? Of course, maybe the game isn't ready, so you can't use the game engine. Maybe it's for the next generation consoles that doesn't exist. Okay, well, then you maybe go with the CG point of view, right? And, and sort of go into a traditional VFX pipeline. Uh, but it's also what I was talking about earlier a little bit, right? What, what we're trying to do with trailers often is, is sort of say how it is to experience that game. And that might be best done in a very different style. It, it could be a more realistic version. It can be live action. It can be a totally stylized version that doesn't look like a game. Because you're trying to show people what the experience of playing the game is not necessarily always directly show them the game that might come later and that's the game play trailer right so it, it, it's sort of balancing all of these things sometimes if let's say the game has a very pop art um, sort of design to it maybe you lean heavier on that right because that's the feeling you want the players to engage it when they play it right so then you go overboard with that direction and you push that further right so it, it, it's sort of really understanding that and understanding of course, as Angela said, the, what the developer wants and what the marketing teams want, but understanding the purpose of the trailer, right? What are you trying to achieve with it? Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess there's even this question of you don't you don't want to make your uh, trailer too good, right? <laughs> because there's that truth and advertising thing, just like you know going back to comic book covers and what was really inside those comics, right? Uh, the comic book covers sometimes look so much better, right? And uh, I can think in in the sort of trailer realm, going back a lot of years now, that the you know the um, the trailer for Dead Island um, was just spectacular. It was such a such a great story into unto itself with this sort of reverse movie sort of uh, effect that they did, and uh, it turned out it was it was so much better than the game. <laughs> and uh, I think that. Uh, uh, you know, there's there's something to be careful about, I guess, in in how you create these trailers, right? Um, anyone want to start on that topic about like how do you achieve that balance? I guess. Or... Yeah, I mean, I I can jump in there again. I mean, I, th I think striking the balance. It's I wouldn't I would say it's maybe not super different than how you sort of make any other sort of trailer or advertising or anything else, right? If you do an advertising for a car, you highlight its best features, right? And what your intended market is for it, right? You don't sell a, a family wagon as a as, as a Porsche or a sports car, right? But but you do of course highlight what's good with it and you gotta understand what the game is going for and what the community is expecting out of that game and you lean into it. I think if you do if you do like high end visual effects, we call it CG, you have to really make sure that it, it's clear that it is not gameplay, right? So you want to be authentic to what the game is. You want to do the right types of move, have the right types of skills, the right types of characters, and the performances of the, those characters relate to the lore of that game and they behave like the characters in the game do. Um, you want to hit all of those. But I do think there is definitely ways where there's advantages not to do the gameplay and, uh, you know, graphics. And it is, again, if you want to lean more into the feeling of playing the game or the history of the game, right, where you can immerse yourself a little bit more in it. But quite often a combination is great as well. Yeah. I think also as as creatives and storytellers, we are just going to use the tools that we feel are best, right? And and we're quite diverse company. You know, mm -hmm. we have we do a lot of different things and we have a lot of diversity in terms of the art history and, and the craft that we're doing. So I think when we attack a project, we just basically are, are tool agnostic. Like we we look at what is the best tool for, for this particular project. Mm -hmm. So maybe that's a, a point of differentiation as well. Yeah. I did, I did want to uh, ask you know, like uh, a bit of history here too like how did the mill come to specialize in some of these things and you know why why did the clients start coming to you as opposed to just you know making these trailers themselves things I'll start why we came 
to the mill and then <clears throat> Robert and Morton, if you want to talk a little bit about the history, but some of the best storytellers, you know, right. if you look at um, the legacy of, of the mill and the creatives and the ability to tell stories in this median with such a technical, um, complex <laughs> medium you know these really they really are the best in the business that that do this um so that's why clients you know like myself reached out to um the mill in my experience um from that side of the business because it's some of the best storytellers who get who understand the medium and the the com the complexity of, of it technology technologically so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah and I, I do wonder yeah. also how you guys got into this. Like, uh, how did you personally just uh, sort of pick this up as like, this is something I want to do, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, totally. I mean, uh, you know, personally, I mean, obviously I've been an animation and, and sort of uh, fan for my entire career, right? Start, started before I got into this industry. But I think, you know, the mail and m what we do has been, you know, short form advertising, short form films, right? And mm -hmm. so our teams are very good at working fast and doing high quality work. And, uh, you know, naturally, you know, we did, I mean, over the years, of course, game advertising has changed drastically, right? I mean, early on, it, you didn't do much gameplay, you didn't do, it started being live action, sort of trying to show the lifestyle of how it is to play or have a console, right? And that was kind mm -hmm. of, and then it sort of evolved from there, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, we started doing it. It came with the work we were doing. Our clients reached out to us. They saw the other work we were doing, and it, it kind of naturally grew. To be honest, right? We, we worked with some clients, and they had some gaming work. We did that really well. You know, it's a long time ago, but that just then keep growing, right? You executed it well, and people were happy, and mm -hmm. more, more came. It, it, to be honest, back in the day, you know, 15, 20 years ago, when we started doing it, it wasn't a strategic. Like let's go off to this type of work. It was a way smaller industry back then, and I think it naturally has grown with that guy. Right? Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously we have super great artists, right? And, and they are some of the best in the industry, and they are also like, you know, we we have fantastic character artists. We have the amazing animators, right? And they're also all gamers, right? So mm -hmm. it sort of comes with the territory a little bit, right? So it gets yeah. our teams super excited as well, right? But I think you even hit on something really good there. Sethi is 15 years ago it was completely different mm -hmm. so the medium was different and what you were trying to communicate was different but the passion and the stories and the, the visual artistry of it hasn't it's just mm -hmm. evolved and got more complicated and and even bigger and greater where the two have intersected um a lot closer so mm -hmm. in my opinion but yeah mm -hmm. And Morton, did, yeah, did I mean, you I, have a different path in as well, or how did how did you get into you know, it? It's it's very similar. You know, I, I started as a VFX artist. I mean, like right from when I was a kid, I've always been running around with a with a video camera and and <laughs> and, and shooting stuff for people. Um, but I think I think what's changed is the in the last sort of twenty years. Like twenty years ago, it, it, I I don't I don't feel we had the same. We didn't have the right tools, maybe, to really tell stories in the same way that we can now and so i think the 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 way that we sort of evolved as filmmakers you know coming from the sort of cg and vfx background has just been a really natural path in that you know the technology that we embrace has just allowed us to create much more immersive stories and so yeah it's it's similar to what rob robert was saying mm -hmm. I, re I remember that um youtube and and um uh, Ubisoft did a sort of like a study on on game cam game marketing campaigns, and you know they noted like you know uh, when you just launched a game and it went to the stores and then it sold for a while and then it was done, um, you, you had something like a four month window or so, and and so you would do maybe you know one trailer right, uh, and and that would be that. Uh, but uh, but they noted that like it stretched out so much over time that like you know you could you could be doing these campaigns for more than a year and you know you would you would start it you know, you know to get people excited and then um and then 
you know, there there would be the post game content, like the DLC would come, or you know, it it might even be a live game right now. And so, like now, there's so many different kinds of trailers that you have to do in that whole process, right? Of getting people excited and keeping them excited even after it ships, right? Um, and so, it's interesting that that that's a big change as well. Like, 100% that bu- the business is just exploded for content mm-hmm. and needing to keep people engaged and you know it's it's a product that keeps delivering you know two months after it ships and there's a new map or there's you know a new skin or something so mm-hmm. it's it's ever evolving and you know their marketing teams need to promote that somehow and you can promote it in game or you can promote it outside of game and you know mm-hmm. we're we're set up to be the perfect partners to work with all that, um, especially if we are helping them do their cinematic, you know, <laughs> reveal trailers and stuff like that. So mm-hmm. it's just it's just expanding and growing. And I don't see it. Um, in my opinion, I don't see it getting less. I think that there will be a need and an appetite for just more content. And the question is, is just what type of content is it and where does it live? In my opinion. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, Okay. So jump and say, I, I love that type of work as well because that's when when it continues that's when you can develop the characters right and the backstories or introduce new characters right mm-hmm. and that's really fun and that engagement with the fans as well right when you look at what they like and you make you make sort of short stories for them right to keep the game alive that's so much fun mm-hmm. yeah I, I wonder what kind of storytelling you aspire to um, Morton do you want to tackle that first <laughs> Yeah, um, I mean, I I really aspire to make stories that touch people and that moves people, you know. So for me, it's about, you know, the things I find interesting are the ones where um, the audience can relate to the characters. And and if you, I, I feel like the most successful storytelling is the stuff that just sort of hits you in the gut emotionally. And that's, mm-hmm. you, you, you know, we were talking about the Dead Island trailer mm-hmm. and you know, it's probably like 10, 10, 15 years old at this stage, but mm-hmm. it just, you know, you could see a bit of, I, I remember watching it and I, I, I could just see a bit of myself in it, you know, and then, you know, the, the, those first tones of that piano, when they come on, you just, you feel that thing. Mm-hmm. So that's, that to me is the kind of storytelling that I'm really interested in, in you know, to, just touching people emotionally with it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, anyone else in that too, I guess, uh, storytelling or? Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I agree with Martin. You want to sort of evoke feelings with it, right? And um, it, it, it can be, but you can take different points of views on on the story you want to tell, right? But you do want an emotional response from watching it, right? Is it is it humorous? Is it fun? That can be really exciting to do as well. Is it exciting? Is there a twist, right? You want to do stories that people get uh, pumped from seeing, right? If it's laughter, if it's you know scary, if it's adrenaline, right? It doesn't matter. But what, what you want to do is is draw that emotions out of people when they see the films, right? And then connect that to to the game and how it is to play the game, right? So you you of course you always tailor it, but I think I mean to be honest, you can for most creatives you can give them almost any sort of brief, right? And say, hey, go and do this. And you'll as you're working through it and as you're writing and as you're sort of developing it, you get into it, right? You you find your point of view of of how that story is supposed to tell and it draws you in. So I mean, personally, you know, I, I, it's all fun stuff, right? I, I, I'm passionate about it all, right? It's fun mm-hmm. to make these things. And you'll always find different challenges in, the, in each story that you're telling. Yeah. I, I guess there's some uh, risks in, in being maybe too too good at the storytelling and uh, um, creating um, uh, the highest expectations, right? I guess uh, you, you do want to, to, to make this, you want to get people excited about the game, but you don't want to get them uh, uh, so excited that uh, they're going to be disappointed when they actually play the game, <laughs> right? So there's, there's, that's part of that balancing act again, I guess. Absolutely. You have to, you know, I think that that's part of the dance, you know, because again, everybody, I just want to overpromise and underdeliver, mm-hmm. and you know we as partners with our develop with our developers and with our studio partners and our marketers mm-hmm. want to make sure that you know we're delivering to to their KPIs and their their um, business. So mm-hmm. and, and to the fans 
right, first and foremost. I mean, nobody nobody knows the gamers better than the developers themselves, right? You know, the, mm. the fans are so um, insanely meticulous and attentive to to the detail, right? Mm -hmm. You know, um, when when that Last of Us uh, reveal trailer came out and the Firefly symbol was revealed, I mean, it it was just it was just chilling to see all the reactions from people in the crowd, like how people were losing their minds, right? You know, <laughs> so I think what everything that we do is always like very, we're very careful of, of being in tandem with the developers to make sure that we carry out their vision because, mm -hmm. you know, we, we don't want any disconnect with, with whatever we're doing doesn't make sense with, with what their plans are and what their, you know, research has shown. It's the most vocal community. It is a really strong dance, you know, because they're they're enthusiasts, mm -hmm. gamers. I, I've never worked in an industry as with as big of fans as mm -hmm. in gaming, and it's exciting. But you're he, you're held to a standard. You're held to a bar, you know. Mm -hmm. they, you really and truly are. And you know, as content creators, from studio to marketing to you know, live service to everything, like they are not afraid to say you've effed up <laughs> or, oh my God, I love it. You know, like there's, there's both ends of it. So mm -hmm. it really is an, it's an amazing industry to work with. Mm -hmm. And I think, I think when you do a trailer, right, you have to look at all types of fans you have, right? You have the hardcore fans that knows everything about the game and its IP and its lore, right? If it's an existing one or, if it's a new one, they will dive in and you have the more casual fans and you need to make trailers that speak to all of them. Right. And that's, mm -hmm. again, we, we, we've talked earlier about this, like for the hardcore fans, it's, it's the research and to attract new players, you gotta, that's where maybe absolutely the story comes in, right? You gotta bring something that's engaging to watch and that's mm -hmm. fun to sort of experience. Yeah. I, I like, I like how some trailers will, you know, uh, drop hints or create a mystery and, and then the fans like just go down a rabbit hole like you know it, it could be something like an alternate reality game and they they start you know solving the pieces of the puzzle together and you know unraveling a conspiracy theory about like oh what are they trying to tell us in in this game right and so uh it, it, it you know the trailers can get so um sort of uh you know uh, get people so wrapped up in the emotions and and uh, you know motivated to to do things like it's just you know in, incredible that way. So yeah, I love an um, Easter egg. Yeah. Everybody loves an Easter egg. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah, um, I I guess uh, it, there must be some kind of art to misdirection as well. <laughs> uh, if you're, you know, trying to sort of drop those hints, but uh, also leave the mystery and, you know, not give away the plot, right? Um, uh, and, uh, you know, uh, get get them sort of speculating about something, but maybe they're going down a wrong turn, you know, in, you know, in, in some ways, so. Yeah, I mean, we saw, we saw that on, um, we, we created that on the launch film for uh, the Last of Us Part Two. We had mm -hmm. a moment, um, you know, where we're thinking about um, how to sort of engage the fans. And one of the things that we put in was um, Ellie is basically sitting behind this this uh, vehicle, and you know, she's got a gun in her hand. Mm -hmm. And you know, the sort of diehard fans would notice that she's wearing Dina's bracelet, and she's looking, you know, very distraught, and and is about to go on this murderous rampage. So. You know, just that little detail is something that you could you could see in all the comments from from all the gamers that they they really picked up on it and they were like, oh my god, what's what's happened to Dina? You know, mm -hmm. is, she, is she dead? You know, is she avenged? Mm -hmm. And you know, maybe um, yeah, you'll you'll have to kind of get, play the game to figure it out. But you know, it's 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 always fun to put these things into it. You know, because you get such a an immediate and massive response to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, when when you're talking about a brand new intellectual property. I, want, I wonder what some of that process is like, you know, like how early are you getting involved uh, with the game developers and, uh, you know, how are you extracting whatever vision they have in their heads and sort of putting it into a trailer even before, you know, you've got that art, I guess, you know, uh, at the earliest stage. Uh, I wonder what some of this process is like. It's hard to be too gen general with it because it's very individual to the game, right? Mm -hmm. And but absolutely, on, on some games we, we get involved super early, uh, maybe before it's even a playable game. 
it might exist a, a vertical slice, right? But but it isn't much more than that. There's some of the games that are very narrative driven, um, and there's other games that are not. You know, where it's more about the mechanics of the game. And so sometimes what we're asked to do is create narrative for games that don't really have a narrative, and that's really exciting because you know you have to study the the mechanics and you have to kind of get in the mindset of the gamer. And then we we we're sometimes involved in 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 creating a whole narrative, a whole story, a whole universe that makes you know that translates into the the game mechanics. You know, so to Robert's point, it's it's just different. You know, every every game is different, but you know, it always starts with us listening and and collaborating and and try to gain as much information about the franchise or whatever it is that we're doing as possible. And, I guess and it may also... it may feel like you're probably creating that trailer for the game team and the game developers themselves to sort of get synchronized on, on what they're doing, I guess, right? And... Yeah, I, yeah, I think some of the works definitely get get used like that as well. And, and to Morton's point, right, there are there are games that are sports games and stuff like that, or or other types of racing games. They may not have a big story, right? And it's not that big narrative. And then you sort of lean into the, the the feeling of the game, the adrenaline, how is it to drive a car, how is it to play a soccer game, or you know, how is it to score a goal, right? And and you you can build up exciting narratives and feelings in those regards as well, right? If if it's racing, then you do a competitive race, right? It's it may that's not the biggest story you can tell, right? But mm-hmm. it is a feeling that you want to convey at that point, right? Mm-hmm. So it is it is looking at those, and then it's the lifestyle aspect of gaming, right? That there is, you know, as we talked about, it's a super loyal and a big fan base, right? But some of some of gaming is about lifestyle as well, and, mm-hmm. and that leans in, especially on these games that keep going, right? And the competitive games. At mm-hmm. that point, it, it sort of becomes a lifestyle choice almost to be a gamer, right? So mm-hmm. then you then you want to lean into that community and, and that lifestyle. Yeah, I wonder if you guys want to drill into that notion of like what kind of feeling do you want to create in a game in the gamer like uh you know with the different kinds of trailers i guess like uh you know what what, what should the gamer sort of uh come away uh, from it, the trailer with i think it, I think it varies on the game but mm-hmm. robert morton you know i'll let you answer that i mean i've, I've one word is just excitement right you know mm-hmm. i mean at the end of the day what we're task to do is create content that really sells the game and shifts product right so mm-hmm. you gotta you gotta get in the mindset of who's playing it you know and so so for, for me if if i can if we can collaborate with a developer to create something where the gamer is counting down the game the days before mm-hmm. release you know that is you know where it's like you know the people i play with um you know at night when 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 everybody is sitting talking about the you know now it's only eight days till that release i mean that's really the ultimate goal that's what you're looking for mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah I'm, I'm curious like how you hold all of this together and like you know communicate with all these different departments i guess as well uh, the marketing folks or the you know game developers uh, creative directors <laughs> um it, it must be pretty complicated i guess it is <laughs> <laughs> that's the short no. short version that's the short yeah. answer it is but it's fun yeah go ahead. yeah absolutely and then, of course it comes with the challenges right i mean games if you get involved early games will continue to change right the, the mm-hmm. they can take different directions very quickly right you you know you, you generally you start developing a game by finding play the mechanics right and how it is to play some scenes and then you build a game from there and I'm not saying that all the games are done like that but it's it's a common approach and doing that means that some so during some of that process, things might change, right? The story m- might need to be re- rewritten. A boss fight wasn't as good as they thought, and now we're changing the game, right? Mm-hmm. And if you're developing trailers or content for that game at the same time, you need to roll with that, right? And we, of course, it takes a lot of work to create these trailers. It's big teams of artists, and you know, it's a lot of coordination and a lot of communication and, and planning together with the client to keep everything rolling and going efficiently and moving forward but you have to be very flexible right it, it's it's not it's not a, a set goal always directly from the start and then you just go off and execute right quite often you need to sort of roll with it a little bit and roll with the punches and, and see how things develop together mm-hmm. yeah I'm, I'm curious uh like um uh how you see sort of the realism here and uh 
you know, linear, uh, you know, tra trailers are linear and, uh, and games are interactive, uh, but uh, linear and real time, you know, feel like they're converging here. And so um, it must be a very interesting time <laughs> for, you know, for your craft in particular, I guess. Yeah, it's, it's, it's super fun, right? I mean, I, I, the, the one thing we need to remember though with real time is that it's not real time to create it, right? It's real time to, to, to render it, right? You still mm -hmm. have to create all the assets and all of that, uh, do the storyboards and figure out the story and stuff. But it is a super fun medium to work in, right? It gives you a lot of freedom as a, as a director and storyteller when you can quickly move your cameras around and recompose scenes, right? So it, it is a very fun process where you can work a whole day and then review the entire film in the evening, right? And then make new creative decisions. So it, it speeds up iteration, right? And I think mm -hmm. why it's important to iterate is that the more you iterate, something gets better, right? And, mm -hmm. and that is the key, really cool thing with the sort of real-time world blending in. And another one that I would sort of also highlight is that, that we definitely have done with clients where, where that is a possibility is that you can use you can use part of the game or the game build to make the trailer, right? Or make the film and, you know, that's not always possible, right? But but sometimes it is, and that is super cool, right? You can jump in there and do a super cool previous very fast using game assets and using the game. And uh, it makes for a really good process. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I mean, the linear process, you know, up until the sort of advent of real time, you know, it just it just takes so long. And that means that, you know, it translates into less iterations, which means, you know, perhaps this is is not going to look as good as as what we can do today, where it's like, you know, we have all these real time tools that just makes us more informed all the time. It, you know, it could be simple things like lighting in a scene. You can actually see it. And so you can you start making creative decisions based upon what you now have it right in front of you, what you can see. Um, it can also be things like, um, you know, we're we're talking earlier about, you know, being authentic. You know, one of the things I really like to do is is look at cinematography as, you know, a point that I want to emphasize in my work for for um, authenticity. And the tools that we have today are allowing us to, for instance, create virtual cameras with real time tools so that you can craft the experience that this is actually a human being that's holding this camera and filming this scene, even though it's all in CG. So it's a super exciting time to to be making these things. Yeah. And for me, just to build on what Robert and Morton were saying is it depends on what department you're talking to when you're doing this as well, because marketers might not necessarily have the same um, ability to see something mm -hmm. as, say, a developer or some developers might not. So with these tools, also, you're able to show them what you're thinking closer to a finished product that they can see the the final thing sooner so you have more time to polish and to finish and to really put the sparkle that sometimes when you use the time the time up front you lose the ability on the back end so that's the bonus that i've seen in in, in these new tools um from a craft perspective mm -hmm. I mean, actually, it, it reminds me of this discussion. Just reminds me of the discussion we had earlier. Actually, Wolf, so let me just bounce back to that. When we talked about right, why you would do a, a trailer in a different sort of look, it, 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 that might actually also it reminds me of this real time discussion, right? Because some games have a very different look, right? It might be a strategic game that's a top down view, or that's a a, a fighting game that's a three quarter perspective the whole game, right? When you it's not the easiest way to tell a story that way, right? And that's also sometimes why you need to diverge from that way of telling stories and jump into, a, for the, you know, a live action trailer or a cartoon trailer or a CG mm -hmm. rendered version, because that tells the story better than the fixed perspective of maybe what what the flight simulator is, right? So right. that's the, and then to to Angelo's point, right? Why 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 I thought of that is that. When you use these real time tools, you can bring everyone with you and you can show that difference immediately, right? Which is great. Exactly. Very good. We covered a lot of ground here and, uh, you know, uh, just scratched the surface of, uh, of making <laughs> game trailers. But uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dean. Absolute yeah, thanks, pleasure. Dean. Thanks, guys. Cheers. Yeah.